Welcome, folks, to another Voice of the Lord Bible teaching study. We're in Hosea 5. Turn to Hosea 5. The title of this is The People's Apostasy Rebuked. It means the people have fallen away and they're being rebuked for falling away from God. It's going to be a teaching about the people that are religious that have fallen away from God's word and following their own instruction, following their own religion or their own standards and without God, absence of God. Um, it's also important to know that you will hear the Lord's voice as we read this chapter. Listen to the voice of the Lord. He's talking to his people in this chapter. God says, Hear this, verse 1. O priest, give heed, O house of Israel. We are a house of Israel. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, 9 that we are God's house, not formed or fashioned with the hands of man, but it is our heart. Israel, we are a type of Israel or Judah. Or Jew, and that's in Romans 2 28, verse 29, 28 29 of Romans 2. It says in Romans 2 that you're a Jew inwardly of the heart, not to be seen as a Jew outwardly. Okay, so it goes in Hosea 5 here listen, O house of the king. Now he's talking to a leader that's lifted up in pride, he's a king. For the judgment applies to you, says the Lord, for you have been a snare at Mezpah and a net spread out on Tabor. In other words, there is no rock. It's um, they're a snare because they don't have the real living God. And the revolters have gone deep into depravity which is corruption. But I, the Lord, will chastise all of them. I, the Lord, know Ephraim and Israel is not hidden from me. In other words, God is saying he knows his people. He knows you can't hide no sin or no corruption with God. For now, O Ephraim, you have played the harlot. Israel has defiled itself. Okay. You get defiled. By in Matthew chapter 15, it says there, that that proceeds from your mouth comes from the abundance of the heart. These words of pride, arrogance, uh, hate, envy, bitterness, jealousy, slander. These words defile you. So that's how you get defiled. So Israel defiled itself. Play in the harlot, which is a harlot church. They have a form of righteousness, but denying the word of God to change them. Their deeds will not allow them to return to their God, verse 4. For a spirit of holotry is within them. They are being religious or Christian-like, but they are not born again. And they do not know the Lord, in verse 4, it says. Moreover, Verse 5, the pride of Israel testifies against them, and Israel and Ephraim stumble in their sin. Judah also stumbled with them. They will go with the flocks and herds to seek them. Okay, in verse 6 it says, they will no longer... They will go with their flocks and herds to seek the Lord, but they will not find him, the Lord. Next page. The very top. He has withdrawn from them. It's talking about the Lord has withdrawn from them. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have borne illegitimate children. Let's look up the word illegitimate children in Hebrews 12, 8. 
We're in Hebrews 12, 8. It says, But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. There you go. It tells you who the illegitimate children are. If you're without discipline and you partake of which all have become partakers in the church, then you're illegitimate. Let's go back to where we were in Hosea. In this gathering of people, for they have born illegitimate children, now the new moon will devour them with their land. In verse 8, Blow the horn in Gilbah, and the trumpet in Ramah, Rema, the sound of an alarm at Beth Haven behind you, Benjamin. Ephraim will become a desolation in the day of rebuke. Okay. And it also says among the tribes of Israel, I declare what is sure. So he's going to call out the kings and prince of a gathering of people. And it could be religion. It could be churches. But a people that is not listening to God, they're not obeying God's word, they're not disciplined, they're not reading God's word, so they become, um, they become illegitimate children with God. Okay, so let's look at verse 10. The prince of Judah have become like those who move a boundary. On them I, the Lord, will pour out my wrath like water. Verse 11, Ephraim is oppressed, which means like being depressed, crushed in judgment, because he was determined to follow man's command. This is a very important verse in 11. Why are they going through depression and oppression? And why are they illegitimate with God? Because they are following man's command. It says in verse 11, they're determined to follow man's command, which means that they're following a king, a leader, a head of the church, a harlot. They're following a man that is not giving the word of God to them. So, let's move on. Therefore, I, the Lord, am like a moth to Ephraim, like rottenness to the house of Judah. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his wounds, then Ephraim uh, went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob. But he's unable to heal you or to cure you of your wound. Okay, so whenever you see in verse 12 the moth and you see rottenness, that's what a moth is. It comes like rottenness. It's a curse. And it will eat your garment of salvation, the moth, so that you no longer have salvation with God. It's a curse. And so whenever you turn from God's word, you become moth-eaten and rottenness with a curse in your house of Judah. And you become sickness in a wound because they have fallen away from God and his word and following a man's command. So these leaders, and as a type of leader in a church, they're not doing what God's asked of them, and that is following Jesus and his word. They're listening to what a man has to say and man's command they're following man. So, then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob, but he's unable to heal them. So they're going to a doctor or they're going to a, someone that has uh, medication and treatment, but it's not helping. Verse 14. For I, the Lord, will be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. If you want to see what the lion is, we can look that up in 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, 8. 
Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So, we know what the lion is. It's the adversary, the devil. It says it right there. Let's go back to where we were in Hosea. So apparently, in verse 14, it says, I will be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. So the devil comes as a lion to seek, to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's because God allowed it. He removed the hedge of protection. And God's not protecting Ephraim. He's not protecting Judah, the house of Judah. And we are a type of the house of Judah. The world is a type of Ephraim. So you have Ephraim, the world, worldly people. And you got the house of Judah, which is Christians. Because we are a type of Judah. And it says in verse 14... I, the Lord, even I, will tear to pieces and go away, and I will carry away. There will be none to deliver. I will go away and return to my place until, until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face of the Lord. And in their affliction, they will earnestly seek me, the Lord. So God's anger, if you ever look in Job, Chapter 2, it says that the Lord's anger is Satan. Now, I find that very strange in the Bible. But what I've come to realize, that when the Lord's angry, he departs. He, he leaves the presence of his people, and the devil moves in. So, in Job's case, and in Ephraim's case, and in the house of Judah's case, God has forsaken them because they have forsaken God. If you cling to God, God will cling to you. So in this verse, God's angry. He walks away from them and the devil moves in with affliction to hurt them until they acknowledge their guilt and seek the Lord in their affliction. They will earnestly seek me. They need to earnestly seek the Lord in their affliction, and then they will be delivered. Well, I know this is kind of heavy, but you know what? Fear of God is good. God bless you, and you have a blessed day.